Hey gang, Drex here from DrexFactory.com. One of my favorite classes at this year's Fire Drums was a fantastic class on tutting with staves that was taught by my friend Rico, aka Sol Rizo. He's basically applied some of the ideas of grid tracing, tutting, and anti-bridge to create a framework for spinning that's got me pretty excited to play with my sticks again. I wanted to share with you guys what I learned in that class, some of the basics of this framework, as well as some of the basic patterns and ideas for where you can go with it. Now before we dive in, I just want to take a moment to give a shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Spinballs, and Ultrapoi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can visit them all on the web by following the links down in the description of this video. Now, on with the show. Cool, we're going to start off with an overview of tutting and how it relates to staves. Now, I'll straight up confess that I'm not a very good tutter, but I understand some of the basic principles involved. Basically, you're looking to isolate particular joint movements and sections of your limbs around them. Now, let's talk about the grid that we're using for these patterns. It's similar to Casey Hool's grid tracing framework, but works inside of a smaller area. Instead of a 3x3 grid, we're instead working in what's more like a 3x2 grid, with our body divided along thirds and top to bottom. Take your staves and cross your arms such that each hand is even with the non-native shoulder. This is home base. You should more or less always have one hand that's even with the opposite shoulder. Now rotate one arm straight down to your side. Let's do this with our right arm, but we'll wind up practicing this motion with both eventually. As you do so, rotate the staff that's in your left hand, keeping the staffs parallel the entire time. Make sure to keep your left hand at your right shoulder. Let's continue this motion by continuing to swing that right arm all the way out to the side and straight up with the left hand staff remaining parallel with it the entire time, and come back around to home base with our arms crossed. Now go ahead and swing that left hand up while the right hand staff turns parallel with it. The right hand stays pinned to the shoulder. The left arm will swing all the way out to the side and then down and around to end up crossed underneath the right arm in home base. The right hand staff follows it in parallel all the way around. This is the basic pattern for the grid, switching off which hand is performing the large circle while the other is pinned to the opposite shoulder, with a small folding transition between the two sides. We can also try spicing this up by performing anti-spins or in-spins to either side. Initially, you want to fold the working arm out in an isolation, but then anti-spin out to the side before folding back in at either its top or bottom point. Think, fold out, anti-spin around, fold in, fold out, anti-spin around, lather, rinse, repeat. You'll know you've got this right when at the fold in or fold out points, you have the two pinky ends of the staves overlapping. This can be kind of counterintuitive for people who've learned the classical staff grid with its four quadrants. The biggest thing you want to see happen here is maintaining a point of contact between the end of one staff and the hand holding the opposite staff. Practice this in a mirror to make sure that the point of contact stays in place the entire time. Now we're going to take this idea into the realm of 3D. There's no reason that these staves have to stay locked up against our bodies as we do these moves. Those anti-spins and in-spins can just as easily happen in the Z-axis plane, moving outward towards the audience if we so choose. We can also do our folds in and out on the Z-axis as well. Try adding anti-spins into your fold ins and outs as you play with 3D to give them just a little bit of extra spice. For our final exploration of this framework, let's play around with adding some angles to it. There's nothing saying our staves have to be parallel the entire way through this pattern. What if instead they were at a right angle? One way we could go about this is to tweak our first pattern by having our hands switch which staff is vertical and which one is horizontal when they reach home base. Now when one hand reaches out, it'll be performing an R-type, making the whole thing look like an anti-bridge choo-choo as it goes back around to home base. Think, switch the staves, R-type, switch the staves, R-type, so on and so forth. We could also use these angles in conjunction with tricks we know for 3D. It's here that I feel like the angles really pop because they read a lot better in the 3D world than they do with parallel planes. Try playing around with all the different ways that you can mesh these tricks together and see what you come up with. Here's just a little footage of playing around with this framework to give you some ideas and inspiration. this was helpful. Let me know if you got any questions or comments about this framework by leaving a comment on this video. Got your own combos that use these ideas? Post them to Instagram using the hashtag doublestafftutting and let's see if we can start a trend. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy the flow. Peace. Hey there, thanks so much for watching my video. If you got anything out of it, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel to help it grow. Special thanks to all of my wonderful backers on Patreon. You guys are the ones that make these videos possible. If you're not a current backer and would like to sign up to support my channel, please visit patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. Thanks so much in advance.